The moon hung like a bloodied coin in the night sky, casting a sickly pallid light over the turbulent sea. The waters churned with an unsettling force, as if some ancient beast lurked beneath, stirring the deep. On the jagged cliffs of the cursed island of Blood Rock, a lone figure stood, gazing out at the horizon with eyes that gleamed like polished obsidian. Captain Blackmore, once the most feared pirate to sail the seven seas, was now nothing more than a spectral wraith bound to his ship, the Revenant. His gaunt frame, clad in tattered finery from a bygone age, shimmered faintly, the edges of his form dissolving into the wind. His voice, when it came, was like the creak of rotting wood and the howl of the cold wind over an empty grave. Tonight, they come, he whispered, a twisted smile creeping across his face. His voice carried on the wind, a sound that sent shivers through the bones of any who heard it. Beneath him, in the sheltered cove, the revenant lay moored, her once proud sails, now tattered shrouds, fluttering lifelessly in the breeze. The crew, or what remained of it, moved about the deck. These were not men of flesh and blood, but shadowy, hollow-eyed figures, their faces locked in eternal grimaces of pain and fury. Spectres bound to the ship by a curse as old as the sea itself. Centuries ago, Captain Blackmore had been a scourge upon the waters, his name spoken in hushed whispers by sailors who feared to even utter it aloud. He and his crew had plundered and pillaged with ruthless efficiency, leaving burning wrecks and broken corpses in their wake. But it was not gold or jewels that drove him. It was a hunger for something far darker. Legends spoke of the Obsidian Heart, a black gem said to contain the essence of the sea goddess herself. It was said that whoever possessed the heart would wield the power to command the very oceans. Blackmore, consumed by greed and hubris, sought it with a fervor that bordered on madness. When he finally claimed the gem, deep within the sunken ruins of an ancient city, he felt its dark power surge through him. But with it came a curse. The goddess, enraged by his desecration, condemned him and his crew to an eternity of torment. They would be bound to the seas, unable to die, unable to rest, forever searching, forever longing, their souls adrift in an endless night. Tonight, the curse brought new prey. A ship, the Sea Wraith, was spotted on the horizon, its sails full and proud, blissfully unaware of the doom that awaited it. The crew aboard laughed and sang, toasting their recent success, a bounty of gold and spices taken from a fat merchant vessel. They knew nothing of the shadows that watched them, of the malevolent presence that awaited in the darkness. As the sea wraith drew closer, the air grew thick and oppressive. A cold mist swirled around the ship, muffling the laughter and deadening the sound of the waves against the hull. A chill ran through the crew, the kind that sank deep into the bones and whispered of death. Captain! cried a lookout from the crow's nest, his voice tight with fear. There's something, something in the mist! The captain, a burly man with a thick beard and a brash manner, squinted into the gloom. His eyes widened as the shape of the revenant loomed out of the fog, its ghostly sails glowing with an otherworldly light. By the gods, he breathed, horror dawning on his face. The two ships were nearly upon each other when the attack came. From the shadowy depths of the revenant's deck, spectral figures surged forth, leaping across the gap between the vessels with a speed and grace that no living man could match. The crew of the Sea Wraith fought valiantly, but their swords and pistols passed through the wraiths as if through smoke. The dead were relentless. Ghostly blades slashed, clawed hands reached, and one by one the living fell. Those who were not killed outright were dragged screaming below decks, where their fates would be far worse. 
Amidst the chaos, Captain Blackmore appeared, his form towering over the cowering crew. His eyes, pits of darkness, fixed on the captain of the Sea Wraith, who stood his ground, though his face was ashen with terror. Your soul, Captain! Blackmore intoned, his voice dripping with malice. Give it freely, and your men will suffer no more. The captain's hand trembled on his sword hilt. He looked around at the slaughter, at the faces of his dying crew, and something in him broke. He dropped to his knees, his sword clattering to the deck. I... I yield! He choked out, tears streaming down his face. Take it! Take whatever you want! Just end this! Blackmore's smile widened, revealing teeth like jagged shards of bone. He extended a skeletal hand, and as it closed around the captain's throat, the man's scream was cut short, his body convulsing as Blackmore siphoned the life from him. When it was done, the Seareth was silent. The last of the crew lay dead or dying, their souls drawn into the shadows that clung to the revenant like a shroud. The ship, now lifeless, began to sink, the sea hungrily swallowing it whole. Back on the deck of the Revenant, Captain Blackmore stood, the obsidian heart pulsing in his hand. He gazed at the shattered remnants of the Sea Wraith, his expression one of cold satisfaction. Another soul for the abyss, he murmured, slipping the gem back into his coat. He turned to his crew, their hollow eyes gleaming in the darkness. Set sail, men. There are many more souls adrift tonight. With that, the ghostly ship turned, gliding silently through the mist, a harbinger of doom. And as the night deepened, its spectral sails faded into the fog, leaving only the echoes of lost souls and the lingering stench of death upon the cold, restless sea.